Dylan Brogan from Mrs. here with State Treasurer and U.S. Senate candidate Sarah Godlewski. Uh, thank you so much for joining me today. Thanks for having me, Dylan. It's great to be here. The big question everybody wants to know, why, why are you the strongest candidate to compete against Ron Johnson in the general election? Well, look, I think we all know we can't afford another six years of Ron Johnson. And as a fifth generation Wisconsinite, for me, I stepped up because I was just sick and tired of him just not serving the people of Wisconsin. You know, Dylan, he was busy, for example, worried about things like Evermectin and hydroxychloroquine and calling climate change BS. Well, me as state treasurer, I'm sitting here like helping homeowners by starting a foreclosure prevention fund or providing public schools with funds to buy hotspots and e-learning books when they went remote and were facing the digital divide or financing 300 infrastructure projects when revenues were down for communities and expenditures were up. And so for me, I'm like, look, I'm being scrappy and I'm watching Ron Johnson doing nothing. And I think that's exactly what Wisconsinites want. They want somebody who has a record of being practical and getting things done. And that's what I've been doing as state treasurer. And that's what I want to continue to do in the Senate. I mean, you know, Dylan, this includes things like let's lower the cost of prescription drugs. I mean, it's crazy to me that not only are Republicans defending big pharma, but quite frankly, so are Democrats. I mean, we've had opportunities to let Medicare negotiate, but they've said no. And I'm talking to people who are, you know, literally saying they're skipping their prescription drugs because they can't afford it. It's like enough is enough. And I think at the end of the day, you know, I'm the only candidate in the race that has run and won two statewide campaigns. You know, I ran the constitutional amendment to save the state treasurer's office. And I stopped Scott Walker's power grab when everyone said there was no way we could do it. We took 62% of the vote. And then when I ran for state treasurer as a political nobody from Eau Claire, Wisconsin, and I flipped more Trump counties than the governor, lieutenant governor, and attorney general, including flipping Ron Johnson's own county, Winnebago County, which isn't an easy thing for Democrats to do, um, Dylan. And so I think at the end of the day, it comes down to who can actually deliver and win the state of Wisconsin and who's going to be you know, the practical solution candidate. And that's what I've been doing my entire career. Well, tell me more about the, you know, the state treasurer. Uh, this isn't all your fault, um, but it is, uh, they tried to be eliminated completely. Voters said no uh, with through that constitutional amendment. And, but um, the, the office had, you know, isn't what it was when the state was founded. But so tell me about what you've done with the office or what you've tried to do with the office, you know, given that its constitutional powers have been severely diminished over the years. Like I, 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 what can the state treasurer office do um, currently? Well, Dylan, I think this goes back to a very common thing is that it's never been about the position. The position actually has a lot of power. It, you know, I chair a $1.3 billion trust fund that has independent investment authority. Um, you know, it serves on different pension boards and there's a lot at stake. It's never been about the position. It's always been about the person. And, you know, like, let me just walk you into my first week in the office, Dylan, just to like give you a sense yeah, of please. it. When I walked into the office, I can't make this stuff up. There were wires that were hanging down from the ceiling. They had turned off my Wi-Fi and they gave me a pay-as-you-go flip phone as a way to talk to constituents. And so it was clear that the Republicans were going to try to do whatever they could to make sure I didn't succeed in this office. But you know what? I, I was going to let them buy it. You know, one of my first major actions um, as chair was overturning a Republican gag order where we weren't literally allowed to even talk about climate change as it related to our investments. And then let alone invest in renewable energy projects for public schools. And since then, that's exactly what we've done. Like we've been um, investing and supporting communities that want to transition to renewables. Or as I mentioned, when we hit the pandemic and remember overnight schools went remote, one of the first group of people I called were our teachers and librarians at public schools and said, how are things going? And they were so emotional though. They're like, look, Sarah, kids are driving to the McDonald's parking lot to join my math class. And so literally in like a month by within a month, we had agreed to figure out a scrappy way of providing public schools with funding so they could buy hotspots and e-learning books um, to address the digital divide to, you know, I have a unique relationship with county treasurers. 
And they were telling me how their revenues were down so much that they were worried about funding infrastructure projects or their frontline workers. And since the pandemic, we've helped finance over 300 infrastructure projects because one of the programs that um, as chair I helped oversee is the state trust fund loan program and financing these important initiatives to, you know, I started the home ownership task force still in because we know home ownership is a big issue here in Wisconsin. And then the pandemic hit one week later. And so we immediately went to what are ways we can keep people in their homes and we piloted a foreclosure prevention fund. And now that's being scaled across the state through the help for home ownership program. And we also started Take Root Wisconsin, which is helping people buy, fix and stay in their homes. And so these are just a few things that we've done because look, I believe that it's about economic security and the financial well-being of our state. And I'm really proud of the record that um, we've delivered for the people of Wisconsin. And just like I was able to do things in the state treasurer's office when no one thought that was possible, I want to do the exact same thing in the U.S. Senate. You, you talked about how you're from Eau Claire. You were born and raised there. Uh, yep. Current state treasurer. So, you know, how, tell us a little bit about the in-between there and, and some of your accomplishments and, and why you're qualified to be a U.S. Senator. Yes. Yeah, so I'm a, as you noted, a proud fifth generation Wisconsinite, Dylan. So I feel like it runs deep into who I am. And um, I will tell you, I never thought my career would take me on this trajectory. But, you know, being the daughter of two public school teachers, they always are like, you got to, you know, when you see something wrong, Sarah, you got to stand up and do something about it. And that's honestly how I've tried to, you know, do my live my entire career. So I was a peace and conflict resolution major, and I actually started my career in national security, supporting the Pentagon, which you can only imagine a 20 something year old walking into the Pentagon, Dylan. I think they were like, I think they made a mistake. There's no way this girl's going to last. And um, I started with the assist supporting the assistant secretary of the army and worked my way all the way up to the undersecretary of defense, where I was leading the development of our language and culture capabilities. Um, I then transitioned to finance. Um, I started doing microfinance in uh, rural India, supporting and providing access to capital for women. Um, and then that led to uh, me co-founding an impact investment firm. So we were investing and providing access to capital, whether it's for women or communities of color or right here in Wisconsin, um, because Wisconsin is often rated 50th when it comes to access to capital for, for startups, which is really, really bad. Um, and so providing that direct capital and these businesses that were making a difference and helping to build jobs here in Wisconsin. And that's what then led me to the state treasurer's office because I thought, oh, I'm going to go help the state treasurer use that independent investment authority to, uh, use it to make a difference in the state. And the state treasurer never returned my phone calls and it's because he was trying to get rid of the office, Dylan. So, um, that's when I decided that this is an important office and we need a state's chief financial officer and led the amendment. And you attended college at George Mason University and that and that's what led you to your work in the Pentagon and in your early adult life. Well, I will tell you, Dylan, I think my family was a little disappointed that I wasn't going to be a badger because that's just what you do. Right, Dylan, you got to be a badger. Um, but they put me on this skills inventory program. Um, on what I would do if I went to the University of Wisconsin-Madison and it came up with this program called Peace and Conflict Resolution. And I thought, that sounds incredible. I want to do it. And unfortunately, Madison's like, there's no schools in the state of Wisconsin that offer that. Um, and at the time, the only school uh, for an undergrad was at George Mason University. So that's um, where I got my uh, focus yeah, on Peace and Conflict well, Resolution. A lot of Wisconsinites leave and come back, right? Uh, e exactly. The boomerangs, as we like to be called. Yes. So, you know, this primary race is starting to really heat up. And so far, things have stayed fairly positive. Um, that we are, some of your opponents are, um, you know, being critical that you are independently wealthy and have given $1.5 million to your campaign. Do you think that's a problem for voters? I mean, look, Dylan, I'm a daughter of two public school teachers. I worked at Pizza Hut to help pay for college. And um, I have lived by those values. Like those are the values for of who I am. And that's why I've focused as state treasurer on helping with economic security, like home ownership, because we know right now people don't have the ability to make even like a down payment. That's why we started Take Root Wisconsin or keeping people in their homes with foreclosure or making sure, you know, I've been working on the student debt crisis. And so just like I've led with 
with my values as state treasurer, I'm going to do the exact same in the U.S. Senate. You know, one of the things that I've talked about, Dylan, is that it's crazy to me that my husband, who's an impact investor, pays less in income tax that are less in taxes than my parents who are retired public school teachers. And one of my first major policy papers was about the wealth tax, because we've got to do more to tax the wealthy 1% and to tax corporations. To, you know, I've also been very clear about how members of Congress, and I've taken this own pledge that shouldn't be involved in like trading stocks, nor should their spouses. And we need more transparency and accountability to Congress um, because we want to make sure, in my mind, there should be no question about where your elected representatives' loyalties lie. They should always be with the people of Wisconsin. Yeah. I mean, how do you uh, get to the finish line here when you got some ground to make up? Well, I will tell you, Dylan, I've been underestimated my entire life. Um, and whenever someone has told me what I can't do, I've shown them what I can do. And that's exactly what I'm going to do in this race. Um, and for me, I think what it comes down to is a few things. I think one is Wisconsinites want someone who is a 72 county candidate that um, has a record of getting things done. And as a fifth generation Wisconsinite, I have focused on the entire state. And I've talked about, for example, these infrastructure projects that we've done across the state are providing hotspots and e-learning books for kids when 28% of rural Wisconsin doesn't have access to Wi-Fi. And so for me, it's about who can get these common sense things done, but at the same time, who has the ability, you know, we know in the state of Wisconsin, you're only winning by two to three votes per precinct. That's it. It's 20,000 votes. And when I ran in 2018 as a political nobody from Eau Claire, I flipped nine Trump counties, including Ron Johnson's own county. And we've got to be able to go to these places and win over these voters. We've got to be able to travel everywhere. And I will tell you, how do you do it? It's by building trust. And you can't build trust last minute and just show up to these communities and expect them to vote for you. Um, because they're like, where have you been? And for me, that's not a question because I've been there. Um, and my family goes back five generations to Polk County in Western Wisconsin. And so I think that's a really important thing that we've got to make sure that we continue to focus in on. Um, and I'm going to, you know, continue. I'm not afraid of calling out Ron Johnson when he wants to run against us with inflation. You know, like in my mind, he's going to be talking about, oh, the Democrats are running up the bill and, you know, we're seeing 7.5%. And in my mind, I'm talking about, well, I did a lot of things to keep costs low when I was state treasurer. You know, we were making smart investments. We were providing the largest distributions of public schools in the history of the fund, which keeps property taxes low, because who would have to make up that money? It'd be taxpayers. And so I'm going to talk about what I've been doing. And I think these are important differentiators that voters are looking at to make sure we have the best candidate to defeat Ron Johnson. So you jumped in the race in April 2021. Do you think that that'll help, too, that you've been campaigning, um, you know, while obviously performing your duties as state treasurer? I mean, I, I think that what voters are really looking at is not when we've gotten in the race. In my mind, it's really, what have you done for me? And I think it's who can, make, who can win those 20,000 voters in a presidential off year that uh, we know we're not getting, you know, it's not a huge voter turnout year typically. And so we win by making sure voters um, are, are coming out. And that's what I've been really focusing on is you know, I was the first candidate to go on a statewide tour across the state and meeting voters where they are and listening. And I don't think we do enough of that. And that's been really important to me and my campaign. Why are you, uh, all the other Democrats are pro-choice, but why do you think you're um, perhaps a, the best choice um, to talk about this issue with voters and, and against Ron Johnson when it comes to the debates? Well, as the only woman in this race, um, I believe I bring a unique perspective on this issue, Dylan. And let me tell you, like, this is my nightmare. And this is a nightmare for millions of other Wisconsinites who are at risk now of not being able to make their healthcare decisions that's best for them and, you know, their families. And we're going back to 1849 which Wisconsin has this cruel abortion ban on the books where there's no exception for rape or for incest. And it's not even taking women back 50 years. We're talking about bringing women back to before the Civil War, when my family was coming to this state, bef like, bef like 1849. I mean, it was a long time ago, yes. It's, it's horrifying. And I think what's also horrifying is 
we're criminalizing doctors for making these decisions because what happens is doctors could be sent to jail for up to six years. They could be fined thousands of dollars. And, you know, what's Ron Johnson's response to this? Well, you know what? Women should move if they don't like it. Well, we've got a brain drain issue already in Wisconsin. We need to do everything we can to bring with, you know, people who were public school graduates from our great state to come back. We want businesses to come to Wisconsin. But if they're impacting our decisions on what we health care decisions we can make, that's really scary. And I think something that I want to emphasize, Dylan, is it's not just, you know, we're looking at even things like the abortion pill that would be restricted, which we know, I mean, something like 50 percent of folks are, you know, that decide to um, make their reproductive decisions. That's what they use. And that's all going to be restricted, Um, which is why I've been talking about this since I've gotten in this race. Like this isn't for me just a bandwagon issue. Like the Supreme Court has decided this. I mean, I've been talking about this since the very beginning, because honestly, like I'm frustrated with my own party. You know, we've had the White House, we've had the Senate and we've had the House. We've had 50 years to codify this, Dylan. And yet we haven't prioritized it. And one of the reasons why I believe it hasn't been prioritized is we need more pro-choice Democratic women at that U.S. Senate table fighting for this stuff. Um, And that's one of the reasons why, in addition, I've come forward to talk about what Biden can do. You know, he needs to be starting to think about executive orders, for example, making sure that Medicaid, um, when patients have to go out of state, they cover, for example, abortion services. And so we've got to be creative in this moment to make sure at the end of the day, uh, we're doing everything we can to support women and their families and making these important healthcare decisions. So I, I keep bringing up these Republicans running for governor, but uh, just because I think it perhaps previews some of the attacks that, that might be coming your way if you're the nominee. And um, you know, Scott Walker is saying Tony Evers wants to murder babies up until they're born, right? And trying to paint him as the radical on this issue. Uh, how do you, how do Democrats um, get around that sort of vitriol attack? Well, I think you are hitting the nail on the head, Dylan. We're missing the forest for the trees because what the Supreme Court is saying is that it, we're talking about a decision that a woman can make with her doctor. That's what's at stake. It is about a decision. That is the first thing, whether it is, you know, not even for the exception of rape or incest here in Wisconsin. And so that's what I worry about is to me, this very Supreme Court decision that's likely going to be coming down in the next few weeks um, is going to really question. um, I mean, we're not going to be able to make these decisions. It's impacting our ability to like, it's an attack on our freedom and it's an attack on our liberty. And if they can legislate, if people like Ron Johnson and Mitch McConnell can legislate what women can do to their bodies, what's next? And I think that's the other piece of it is that I worry about what else is going to be coming down from this as we talk about um, other uses of contraceptives and um, different things that are critical for women and families and planning their future. So and do you think the, the people of Wisconsin are closer in line with your views on this issue than Ron Johnson? I mean, look, poll after poll has shown a majority of Wisconsin's, and we're saying that oftentimes a significant majority of Wisconsinites don't want anything to happen to Roe. And so I think that is, you know, we are seeing this firsthand. And, um, you know, something that really resonated with me as I was talking um, with a woman in her 70s, and she said, it is crazy to me that my daughter and granddaughter might have fewer rights than me. I never thought we would be going backwards. And I think that resonates true is that we are taking away more and more rights when we should be doing the exact opposite. We should be empowering women to be making these decisions with their doctors and their families. I've been joined by State Treasurer Sarah Galuski, one of the Democratic candidates for U.S. Senate. Thank you so much for joining me today. Well, thanks for having me, Dylan. It's great to be here.